Good afternoon, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko from Los Angeles, California. Currently, I work as a senior engineering manager of ASDAT. In QA field, I've been, I've been for more than eight years. And today, I want to share with you how to spend your first days, your first weeks at your job as the QA engineer, as the developer, no matter who you are. We all have to start from somewhere and a lot of people have fears. Fears of being fired, fears of not being up to expectations and many other fears that we're gonna get through. But don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the fat thumb up, fat thumb up, whatever that like button below. Uh, subscribe to our Telegram and Instagram channels. Let's get to it. By the way, I forgot to mention, stick with us until the end of the video and I will give you some bonus tips of how to show your big, big round whenever you get to your job. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna talk about two situations. Situation number one, when you are a brand new engineer, you went through a bootcamp, somebody, uh, somebody else helped you to found this job, your friend hired you, doesn't matter. You're, if you're an engineer and you are there for the first time in your life. And what do you do? What do you expect? How do you not get burned out and overwhelmed with all of those thoughts and fears? Thing number one that you always need to remember, whenever you get hired, it means you have already went through an interview and it's your first day. No matter what, no one is going to fire you on your first day. Just remember this and calm the beep down, okay? Cool, let's move on. So usually, depending on the company, you will have something like called, something that's called a grace period or whatever period you wanna call it, but you will have certain amount of time that no one is going to bother you. People will let you on board, people will let you take your time, will let you read documentation, will let you spend time with other employees so you could learn from them. So you should have no fear at all for the first couple of weeks. In some cases, it could be even a month or two months. It depends on the complexity of the application, but regardless, calm it down and take it easy, okay? Let's move on. So whenever you get, whenever you join a company, you will have some sort of onboarding process. Unless you're joining a very new startup that has no structure at all, no documentation and maybe no people, then you might not have an onboarding process, but very likely you will, I promise you. And what happens is, or, or what is an onboarding process is, people will set up a meetings for you, they will send you documentation so you could take your time, read the documentation, understand what does application look like, and how to work with it, what is the workflow, and then you will have multiple meetings where people will explain it to you multiple times. Don't be afraid. I'm saying multiple times because it will happen multiple times. It's not like, here is how it looks like, okay, now let's get to work. It does not work that way. It will never will. People will let you on board, they will let you take it easy, understand the flow, and only then, they will start asking you questions slowly, little by little, and will start giving you a task. If you're a QA engineer, they will give you a task to write test cases or to test tickets. If you're a developer, they will give you some features to work on, some tiny, tiny features, so you could learn by writing the code. Same thing if you're a QA automation engineer, they might give you some automated tasks so you could fix them. Because whenever you fix something, you will understand the logic because you cannot fix things if you do not know how do they supposed to work, right? Awesome. So that's a case number one when you have just joined a company for the first time. Case number two, when you are joining a company and you have some experience, you have a couple of years or multiple years experience regardless. And let's say you did not go for an interview for a while, but you went for some, you got your job offer, you, you approved it, you went for it, and now you don't know what's gonna happen. Very similar story, if you have more experience, it's exactly the same story as with a new person, but you have advantage. You know how things work. If you are a QA engineer, you might come on board and you might ask them, hey, could you please give me all of the documentation? Give me the access to task rail. Give me the access to task case management system so I could go through the task cases and could learn application by doing that. Give me all of the requirements that you have. If you're a QA automation engineer, you might ask, ask them to give you access to the GitHub so you could clone repository 
and actually start writing code. Just maybe even just run the, uh, run the framework for the first time. Run it, see what is broken, what is not broken, what works, what does not, and start asking follow-up questions. Same thing applies to developer, to the person who have onboarded. If you get the code right away, if you will ask for some job right away, if you will be as active as possible, if you'll be proactive, if you'll not wait for people to give you a job, but if you will do the job right away, people will treat you differently. And regardless of your QA, QA automation or developer, people will treat you very differently because you show who you are during your first days and the first weeks. If you jump into work right away, if you do your best, if you stay till late, even though I understand your brain is gonna be exploding just because you're new and you have so much to learn. I fully understand that. I recently joined a crazy small startup and I have to learn so many things without onboarding process, but it's a part of the game. If you enjoy it, you go for it. But main thing, do not simply give up. Do not have a fear that you're gonna get fired people will give you time to calm down. And just to be honest, in US, in order to fire a person, you have to, you have to take a lot of time to do that right. Because if you get fired or if someone fires you for no reason, you can sue them and you can sue them for lots of millions of dollars. So trust me, from my experience, from what I've heard and what I've seen, it takes about three to four months to fire a person in a right way. Just FYI, so have no fears. Calm the pee down, take your time and learn the application, show your best so you could, tell, you could pretty much show people who you are. You're not talker, you're not thinker, you are doer and that matters a lot. All right, bonus tip number one. Whenever you get your job, whenever, regardless of how much experience you have, whenever you join a company, if you are individual contributor, which means dev, QA, etc., not lead, not a manager, for those who are gonna talk, uh, talk about in a second, but if you are individual contributor, thing number one that you have to do is schedule a lot of meetings, meet and greet, whatever you wanna call them, but you have to schedule, if you're a QA engineer, schedule those with a development lead or with developers that you're gonna work with, schedule it with a tech support, which is very important, uh, or a tech support leads and a managers to understand how do they see the product, to understand how do they get, how do they report issues and who do they assign it to. You need to fully understand the process in order to be able to help them out to show, uh, to show your ownership of the product. So we've got development team, we've got tax support team, and we've got also uh, HR or a people team. You have to meet with them just to understand uh, entire, entire company organizations and where do you fit in it, how you could assist or how could you help other teams by using your skills. So that would be for, for the QA, for developers, pretty much the same story, sync with the QA, uh, with the QA manager or a QA lead to show them that you are fully dedicated to the quality of application. You are not simply a developer who's doing, who's fixing things and throwing them over the board. So QA would check it. No, you're not that way. You wanna show them how good you are, how dedicated you are to the quality of the application, not only to the development. So. Sync with the developer, uh, sync with the developers, sync with the tech support as well to show them that you are ready to fix issues and you're ready to help them to figure out which issues are critical and more customer impacted and which are not. Once again, it will, sh it will show you from a very different perspective. And trust me, for individual contributors, this is a way to grow. This is a way to become a lead and a manager of the QA and of the development, regardless of which part of the IT field you are in. Cool, uh, tip number two, that will be the same one, but for the people who are, who are leads and managers. So you have to do exactly the same thing, but on a different level. Sync with the, with the directors and the C-level and et cetera, and also with the managers of those teams because on your shoulders is a cross-functional collaboration. On your shoulders is building a strategy or a function around cross-functional uh, cross collaboration between development, between QA, between tech support, to build a pipeline for the fastest customer, most customer impacting issues fixes possible. So whenever, so whenever a customer support or a tech support would get a, an issue, they would have sort of a script 
to figure out what type of issue it is and if it is type of issue. So they could send it to a next person or they could directly put a type of an issue so you or a next person in the triaging team could find out who does it have to be directed to. Does it have to go to the back-end team? Does it have to go to the front-end team? Or is it questionable and it has to go to the QA team because we're still not 100% sure which part of the application bug is coming from. All right, quite a few tips. Thank you for your time. Jeez, you guys must have been overwhelmed. I know I gave you so much information and you might have now not even swallowed most of it for any, anyways. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope you got my idea and if you did get it, trust me, you will easily be able to become a lead and a manager and a director in the near future because you know what to do. You know how to show yourself whenever you join a company and that's first impression is pretty much the right impression all the time. So do give them the first impression. Make sure they know you. New company knows you as the doer who makes the difference and who cares about the quality of the application. Anyways, if you still want to learn how to become leader and a manager and a director in the future, we did start a membership program. I'm going to add a link in the description below. Check it out, let me know what you think. We have a, calls, um, a weekly calls on Wednesday, 6 p.m. by California. So you could learn how to become a manager, how to become a leader, how to become an owner of the part of the application or of the entire organization. It only depends on you and how much of the will do you really have. Thank you for your time. Don't forget to give me that big fat thumb up again. Subscribe to our channel, subscribe to our Instagram and a Telegram channel where we share many more things that we share on a YouTube. And you have a wonderful and a safe day.